welcome to Loving the Scriptures. I'm your host, your friend, Joshua Odunlade, and together we'll be exploring God's Word to find insights, learn from Him, and to fall more deeply in love with Him today. Let's begin. Hello and welcome to this episode of the podcast. Today we are going to be having a recap of the book of John chapter 16. In the last episode, we finished the book of John chapter 16. So very quickly in today's episode, we'll just be reading the text together again. And then if a few things drop into our minds, we'll talk about it. But if not, we read the text, we say thank you, Jesus. And that's the end of the episode. So let's pray. Dear God, we say thank you for this day, for the opportunity that you have given unto us to be able to seek you in your word again. Lord, we are grateful, we are thankful. Lord, we say let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. If there is any sin, any at all whatsoever that we have committed against you, Lord, we are sorry. We ask that you would please forgive us in the name of Jesus. We ask that you would please wash us clean with your blood. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God is going to reveal himself to us in his word today. So I'll be reading the text, John chapter 16, from verse 1 to the end again today. And as I read it, as we read it together, God is going to begin to drop some things in your mind, some things that you probably never noticed before. So I want you to take special note of those things that he drops into your mind. And after the episode, please make sure to meditate on them and also to pray on 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 them as well it is very important it is very very important so john chapter 16 however i'm not going to be reading from the csb version like i usually do i'm going to be reading from the message translation i read let's remember jesus is speaking here I've told you these things to prepare you for rough times ahead. They are going to throw you out of the meeting places. There will even come a time when anyone who kills you will think he is doing God a favor. They will do these things because they never really understood the Father. I've told you these things so that when that time comes and they start in on you, you will be well warned and ready for them. I didn't tell you this earlier because I was with you every day but now i am on my way to the one who sent me not one of you has asked where are you going instead the longer i've talked the sadder you've become so let me say it again this truth it is better for you that i leave if i don't leave the friend won't come but if i go i'll send him to you When he comes, he will expose the error of the godless world's view of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He will show them that their refusal to believe in me is their basic sin, that righteousness comes from above, where I am with the Father, out of their sight and control, that judgment takes place as the ruler of this godless world is brought to trial and convicted. I still have many things to tell you, but you can't undo them now. But when the friend comes, the spirit of truth, he will take you by the hand and guide you into all the truth there is. He won't draw attention to himself, but will make sense out of what is about to happen. And indeed, out of all I have done and said, he will honor me. He will take from me and deliver it to you. Everything the Father has is also mine. That is why I've said, He takes from me and delivers to you. In a day or so, you are not going to see me. But then, in another day or so, you will see me. That stirred up a honest nest of questions among the disciples. What is he talking about? In a day or so, you are not going to see me. But then, in another day or so, you will see me. And because I am on my way to the Father, what is this day or so? We don't know what he is talking about. 
Jesus knew they were dying to ask him what he meant, so he said, Are you trying to figure out among yourselves what I meant when I said, In a day or so, you are not going to see me, but then in another day or so, you will see me. Then fix this firmly in your minds. You are going to be in deep mourning while the godless world throws a party. You will be sad, very sad, but your sadness will develop into gladness. When a woman gives birth, she has a hard time, there is no getting around it. But when the baby is born, there is joy in the birth. This new life in the world wipes out memory of the pain. The sadness you now have is similar to that pain, but the coming joy is also similar. When I see you again, you will be full of joy and it will be a joy no one can rob from you. You will no longer be so full of questions. This is what I want you to do. Ask the Father for whatever is in keeping with the things I've revealed to you. Ask in my name, according to my will, and he'll most certainly give it to you. Your joy will be a river overflowing its banks. I've used figures of speech in telling you these things. Soon, I'll drop the figures and tell you about the Father in plain language. Then you can make your request directly known to him in relation to this life I've revealed to you. I won't continue making requests of the Father on your behalf. I won't need to. Because you've gone out on a limb, you've committed yourself to love and to trust in me, believing I came directly from the Father. The Father loves you directly. First, I left the Father and arrived in the world. Now, I leave the world and travel to the Father. His disciples said, Finally, you've given it to us straight in plain talk. No more figures of speech. Now we know that you know everything. It all comes together in you. You won't have to put up with our questions anymore. We are convinced you came from God. Jesus answered them, Do you finally believe? In fact, you are about to make a run for it, saving your own skins and abandoning me. But I am not abandoned. The Father is with me. I have told you all this so that, trusting me, you will be unshakable and assured, deeply at peace. In this godless world, you will continue to experience difficulties, but take heart, I've conquered the world. Take heart, Jesus has conquered the world for us. Feel free to listen again and again and again to the reading of the scripture. Feel free to listen again and again. It has a way of transforming and changing our lives. Jesus told all these things to his disciples so that they would not be afraid. They were about to watch their master, as we have said over and over again, they were about to watch their master go to a cross, be slaughtered on a cross, be crucified on a cross for the sins of the world, and they were about to be scattered as sheep everywhere. But Jesus kept on giving them these comforting words. And also, he keeps on giving us these comforting words as well. Take heart take heart jesus has overcome the world for us let us pray dear father we say thank you for your word for the strength that we have drawn from your word because your word is a well that never runs dry lord we say the ability to keep on drinking from this eternal well that you would grant unto us in the name of jesus we say thank you lord in jesus name we have prayed Amen. I believe you have been blessed by this episode of the podcast. Please follow us on this platform or on wherever you get your podcast. Also, please share with your friends and family so that they can be blessed by it too. Till we meet again, keep seeking, keep searching, keep meditating on God's word and keep on loving your scriptures and keep on loving God. God bless you.